Smiley, I'm your host today, and we have the fabulous Suzanne Caldera. Thank you. How are Thank you today? <laughs> I'm doing awesome. We are very happy to have you. We have yeah. our friend Vanya here. Morning. Jennifer and Morning. Lee, and we're here to ask you basically how you got from where you were to where you are now. Wow, that's uh, <laughs> do we do we have a few hours? We have a few, <laughs> we have a, we have a few, few minutes on this segment, but I'm it's teasing. it's helping yeah. people to realize that you can go from having an idea, a concept in life, and being able to change your life to be where you are today. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why we we selected you. You are an incredible person. And we're happy to, to be talking to you today. Well, thank you. Um, I, I believe in the power of, you know, of yourself, of being able to, you know, come from, uh, you know, I, I believe I have a story that I can share. I came from nothing and didn't really have much education. I, I did a little bit of college, but I really wasn't a good student. Uh, started working in a job retail, selling cars, and then that helped me to get a little bit out of my shell. Selling show. cars. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that. I wouldn't have guessed that. Really? I think, no, no, not at all. Yeah. Well, I was 19. I, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was going to do, and and you know, I I I didn't have a lot of direction, and I had gotten at a really low point. I I know I've shared this with you, where I turned to drugs, um, and. You know, it got really bad. Uh, it got bad. I, I got into cocaine, uh, into a very fast lifestyle. Um, you know, work hard, play hard, uh, and you know, some days I'd be up for three, four days in a row. Wow. And yeah, um, I had gotten to a point in my life I got really low, uh, where I literally blew fifty thousand dollars up my nose. Wow. And um, was that the? What was the moment? It. it well, the moment, um, the moment was a scary moment. It was, um, you know, I had no more money. I, I couldn't tap any more credit cards. And I basically had a mental thing in my head of what I would have done to get one more line. Mm. And that was a real turning point for me. Um, and I decided to get clean. It was hard. I had some f a few times where I, where I did bounce back. Um, where and did you, where did all this start? Where were you? Uh, well, where were you living or what was I had an, I, this is funny. So this is the nineties. I had an apartment for $400 a month. I was stressing over affording $400 a month. Um, I had basically a few months prior told my parents, I'll see you later. Uh, I'm going to go and, you know, live on my own. And I put my tail between my legs and went back home because I could not afford my rent. Um, had had no more money, and you know, just thought of the things that I would have done for for a high. And I'm like, and this how is ridiculous. Twenty two. Mm. And instead of filing bankruptcy or not paying anything, I paid every single dime off uh, that I owed. Was that hard? Oh, it was extremely hard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I had nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I mean, you get a nice watch or you get a new car. Maybe you overspend. You get something you can show, or you have a closet full of, of you know, if you're a closeaholic or, or whatever. At least you can say like, I did that. I had nothing. I had nothing that I could show for that. But I paid every dime off. What know? did What did your family say? 
My family didn't know. I mean, my I think my family was a little bit in denial. I'm a foreign kid, so my, my mother's from Portugal, and um, and it's the dynamic of at 12, I was making financial decisions for my mother because she couldn't really read and write that well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always kind of had to have that adult relationship uh, with her. Mm -hmm. uh, as I got older, I did tell her what I was doing, and she was like, "Oh no, Suzanne!" <laughs> she <laughs> she, uh, she never uh, she never thought that um, uh, that 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 I did that, you know, and um, and it's interesting, you know, it's a, it's a story that I've wanted to share and, you know, with it comes a lot of, like, shame and, and humility and, and just, you know, because people see me now and they're like, oh, wow. But, but everybody has a story, yeah. you know, and that's yeah. what brought you to where you are now. It did, it did, um, you know, but I, st I still struggle with, you know, just having that vulnerability of saying, okay, this is this is where I came from, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I truly believe. Like, I love like hiring young people, somebody maybe that has a little bit of an edge, mm -hmm. um, and giving them a chance and helping them grow. Uh, because and oftentimes, I think that's what people need is they need a chance to mm -hmm. to have someone believe in them, yeah, and to say that it's okay to make a mistake or you can't live in your past. And those moments that you had in your past really define who you are presently. You know, would we want to go back and redo some of those things? Then how are we going to say that we are the person that we are at this moment if we change the past? As hard as it may be, there's always going to be the ups and downs. Correct. I completely agree. I mean, I, I live my life with no regrets mm -hmm. uh, at all. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a reason, you know, there's a reason why I'm here. Um, and you know, it's a story that that I want to get out there because I know that there are people out there that might be really low, and you know, sometimes if it's it's somebody that believes in you. Yeah. My former boss from uh, the car business, he believed in me. I would mess up so many times. <laughs> I'd want to quit. I'd want to go to another dealer because they'd give you a free car. <laughs> um, and you know, I stayed there seven years. It was hard to leave, and and. Uh, because, you know, deep down I am a, a loyal person, but at that time, you know, going through that, that craziness, you know, if, if my life would have been so different if somebody just didn't believe in me. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so many young kids, young people out there, or even somebody that, you know, maybe, you know, just if they can know that, you know what, I believe in you, I value you, you've got a talent. And that can happen that at any age. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. Because as an adult, you still need someone to say, you know, I'm going to go well, your idea. I truly trust in what your your vision may be, even if you or can't even, see it. Or even I see your potential. I see your potential. You know? Like, I see where you are, and I see where you can go. and Where we might not see it in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. But someone can see it in us. Mm -hmm. And that's also very important. Almost like a diamond in a rough. Yeah. Yeah, and I... I you know, for me, um, and you are sparkling. Oh, <laughs> but I, I just, I think, you know, real people, people that that come sometimes from some of the worst, mm -hmm. uh, the worst situations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they can shine. They can mm -hmm. shine if somebody believes in them. So, yeah. thank you for being your diamond. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you doing now? What do you do here at Shamrock Financial? So, I have, I'm a loan officer with a with a fancy title. I have a vice president title, uh, and it's. Because I've been with the company a long time, and, and sometimes I'll get involved with uh, with doing trainings and uh, helping out some of the loan officers. But my main passion is helping people get financing, whether it be uh, for purchasing a house mm -hmm. or refinancing a house. And I work with all different types of people, from the first-time buyer that has nothing <laughs> to the affluent person to everything in between. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just I love like getting into somebody's head. Mm -hmm. And figuring out like what makes them tick. Why is it important for them to buy? Like you know, what is it? What is it that's really driving the decision? Instead of just being that typical lender that says, "Okay, our rates are, there, are this, right. our closing and costs are this. Really, Do you want to go with me?" There's no. a lot yeah. more compassion yeah. with your mortgage yeah. company than you know what you see on TV. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, how did you get started in this stuff? I was actually recruited. So uh, one of my colleagues, uh, this woman, Liz Letourneau, uh, worked with me in the car business. Hated the car business. Uh, it was it was funny. We would joke and call her the rat because she would um, 
she'd be chirping in my ear mm -hmm. uh, on a Saturday. We're outside at the dealership, and she's like, oh, those people look smelly. They can't afford that. <laughs> and I'd go up, and next thing you know, I'm selling them a car because they had money. They just look scrubby. That's right. all. I would talk to anybody. Can't buy gold. <laughs> <So, again. laughs> yeah. Smart. So, anyway, um, she's a dynamic person. She's mm -hmm. been here. So I've been with the company 15 years. Wow. I think she's got 17 or 18 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you hear the secret, and you hear how things happen in mm -hmm. life. So I could have swore they said Suzanne line too. I pick up the phone and it's her calling for, uh, at the time it was her, her boyfriend who ultimately turned into uh, her husband. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so Liz, tell me about this shamrock. And that's how it started was uh, the conversation. Isn't that interesting? And I just wanted a life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What's your morning routine like? Yeah. Uh, a great morning routine for me is when I can get up early, mm -hmm. read something positive for at least 20 minutes to a half hour. Mm -hmm. uh, I got really into doing CrossFit, so I'll go uh, work out. Uh, lately, though, my eating, man, <laughs> I don't like to tell people <laughs> how much I work out, but that's, uh, that's a 2016 goal. Um, so I'll go work out there shower come in and uh, and then get the day planned so that i can kind of delegate to my team like my main job is to be the rainmaker mm -hmm. my main job is to bring in mm -hmm. business i've got five girls on my team mm -hmm. so i'm responsible for the uh, for their salaries so you know i see a lot of responsibility in that and i'm driven mm -hmm. uh, and the better i do i can raise them up so you know it's that's what i focus on mm -hmm. you know networking meeting uh, new uh, real estate agents new referral partners mm -hmm. meeting with clients so yeah my days are pretty crazy I'm, <laughs> i am a slip my calendar is just tight oh it's tight <laughs> yeah and when i do best we're happy that you squeeze this yeah, in today. thank you <laughs> thanks for making it a sunday yeah normally i don't shower so this is great <laughs> uh, i think that uh, overall you know, even in this building, there are so many motivational quotes. Yeah. You have um, the little kudos table for giving your coworker a little thumbs up for doing something positive. And just by having that constant reinforcement of believing in someone shows that they'll put more of an effort in working for you. Well, it's true, and that also comes from uh, our marketing and events director slash she, her title could be about 15 pages long, this woman, Chalamar Albanese. Uh, she, her, her and our owner, Dean Harrington, are, are very big on creating the culture of the company, mm -hmm. but we also, you know, in, in, in coming up with what some of the visions of the company are, they, they, we believe in what's called a meritocracy. So not, you know, hey, you've been here 10 years, so you deserve this promotion. No, somebody could be here a couple of weeks. That person steps up, mm -hmm. that person's going to be in line for, for jumping up. So it's, you know, we have people that have started here. Um, recently, we, we promoted a girl to vice president of operations. She started off as um, part-time, was a, te a temporary assistant wow. for me for a little bit, then ultimately worked her way through our closing department, and now she's... Because you saw uh, her potential. Company saw it, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, and I believe in that too with uh, people that, that I look to uh, to hire. Now, is there a quota system as far as what they need to do monthly or...? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, for uh, for loan officers, it's, it's, a, it's a sales position. Mm -hmm. So obviously for a loan officer, they've got to produce in order to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. For the admin staff and the support staff, uh, there's accountability because mm -hmm. as you bring in the business, mm -hmm. you've got to make certain that, that that person's going to close and that and that things are going to work and you're going to be able to meet those deadlines. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you're on the fence and it's like getting yeah, close to the... <laughs> you know, I mean, what happens when you have a client that's on the fence? On the fence of getting approved? Or uh, making a purchase, let's say. Well, I mean, that's at that point, they probably might not be in our formal system, but we... You know, one of the mantras of our company is you educate and guide them through the process. So, you know, for instance, if it's one of my clients and they haven't made a decision that they're going to pull the trigger yet, then we're going to send them things of value. Like maybe send them a couple of videos on how to work on improving their credit score or uh, inviting them in for a pre-approval consultation. There's, there's no obligation to do anything. But, you know, I feel so passionate about what I do. I own a home. I own rentals. Um, I don't like being a landlord, and I'll tell people that. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm nicely blunt, and I'll tell them all, all the <laughs> pros and cons. Nice to yeah. Appreciate all the pros and cons of everything. You know, and I, I think in anything, you know, it's beautiful to have a home. Right. But not everyone should have a home. Mm -hmm. So you want to make certain that you're making a, a, a right decision. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, 
you know, I, I really try to help people because, you know, I'll tell you from my past coming as a, I don't know if I could swear, a bleep show in the past to where I am now, you know, a lot of people still run their lives that way. Yeah. Okay, maybe they're, maybe they're not, you know, a mess on drugs and stuff, but mm -hmm. unfortunately a lot of our culture is one check away from, mm -hmm. from just Losing being a mess. Mm -hmm. and, and so I try to really help people on coming up with a budget, coming up with a, a savings plan. It's not required on some loan programs. I'll tell them, listen, this is, <laughs> this, is this is professional advice for you. Uh, but your water heater goes, something goes, let's, you know, let's make sure that you're going to be okay. Yeah. Now, what are the differences uh, between a mortgage company and getting a loan from the bank? Big difference is this is our main passion and our main focus. Like, for instance, a bank, they might say, hey, our auto portfolio is down. Let's really focus on that this month. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and maybe they're not really paying attention to, uh, and, and not that they don't pay attention or they don't want to, but they might not be staffed properly. Mm -hmm. This is what we eat, breathe, and sleep yeah. is helping people get, so, get I, mortgages. Some people need that hand holding, mm -hmm. especially when I bought my first place. I mean, I had not a clue about what mortgage to pick or who to go with, and it was due to referrals from other people, mm -hmm. you know, but it would have been nice to have someone like you, you know, walk us through, you know, years ago. And so by the time I did it again, it was a lot easier, a lot sure. smoother because I had some experience. But for someone that doesn't have a, any idea which direction to go in, what do you, what, how can you, how do you get their attention to come towards Shamrock? A lot, a lot of it for for me as an originator, a lot of it is getting in front of maybe the frontline people, mm -hmm. uh, the real estate agents, the divorce attorneys, the CPAs, the financial planners that might be referring people out, and also with being here 15 years, I have a database, so mm -hmm. I stay on top of that database, and now I'm starting to help people's children, or mm -hmm. I'm helping them because uh, you know maybe they outgrew the house, or they or they're thinking about refinancing. From a company standpoint, I think the company does a dynamic job of inbound marketing you know we have a huge Facebook presence mm. I think we're at about five or six thousand fans I don't know don't hold me to that <laughs> uh, find us on Facebook I, I would never think to be, you know, <laughs> looking on Facebook for a mortgage well that's yeah. one way another but way, it's a sign of the times right, right. it is a sign of the times and you know we we have other inbound ways of of getting people's information. We have a blog, so. Do you have a Twitter account? I have Twitter, yeah, and the company has Twitter, yes. What about yes. Instagram? You know, I have I have a private Instagram. I, have, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I still want to keep some stuff private. I, I probably should get more out there on Instagram, yeah. How do you stay balanced with such a crazy, you know, work life, your home life, your fun life? It's how do you, it's how do you, there's, there is no, there's no utopia. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think one of the pitfalls of being a type A is that sometimes things suffer. Home life sometimes can mm -hmm. suffer. Mm -hmm. And it, as I've gotten older, I've really started to make a shift in really trying to work on working smarter and harder, but working less hours, mm -hmm. yet still producing more. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, it's not always perfect, but I really try to start on my calendar with planning my, me first because I know if I take care of me better, I'm going to be a much better spouse, a much better friend. Yeah. Uh, because mentally, if I don't at least stick somewhat consistently to my workouts, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. So yeah. it's just you know, it's really trying to, and it sounds selfish, but it's you know, it's that plain analogy. You know, they tell you put put your mask on first before you help others. You got to feed your cup first mm -hmm. before you can uh, before you can give to uh, uh, to those around you. And that's what we emphasize here on the collective chat. Finding that affects your family life, your maybe your coworkers because you carry that stress mm -hmm. into work or into your home or even just getting a, a cup of coffee at the local, you know, coffee shop. Yeah. You know, you might blow up on somebody because they yeah. didn't put your sugar or cream right. That that balance of mm -hmm. trying to keep things together, but but like you said, keeping it trying to keep it fluid, and knowing that there might be some bumps, but you know, being able to accomplish them and go over them and and not blow up at somebody. So what do you do in your downtime? Nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's it's funny with um, with my wife. She's really helped me to. Um, 
to just pay attention to the moment. Um, when I was in the car business, I never watched TV. The joke is I missed most of the 90s. I never saw Seinfeld, so <laughs> I would like to binge watch Seinfeld and, and see what, the, what that's about. Um, so, no, we have our, our shows. We're kind of boring. We love like going out to dinner, um, going to the movies, traveling. Um, so downtime for me is just, sometimes it's just putting my butt on that couch. Relaxation. And, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's not boring. There's nothing wrong with relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy my relaxation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See? I feel you relaxing right now. <laughs> I am. You want us to pull up a couch for you? Yes, please. Like, like, a make couch around here. <laughs> so what is the next step in your career, do you believe? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I really love what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. I have a... A business coach. They coach uh, top lenders and and realtors across the country. Mm -hmm. I'm nowhere near tops. So I got a long way to go, uh, but it's really helped me see just a bigger a bigger picture. And it's mm -hmm. not to it's not to have more money. It's more so to have a better life. Mm -hmm. You know, I just have this fear of I don't know losing it all. So I'm still working from yeah. fear. Uh, but and I want to inspire more people. I want to get a bigger team. Mm -hmm. Uh, to be able to help more people get houses, help more people get, get refinanced. So, how do people get involved to be part of your team? You know, it's funny. One girl years ago, I had uh, recruited her from Dunkin' Donuts because I thought she was just so dynamic. <laughs> I, I really did. I thought she was phenomenal. Ultimately, unfortunately, she didn't work out. Uh, but she was a very big part of my team. Um, other times, it's asking and it's checking with my professional network. Mm -hmm. Um, recently, two two new hires have come from uh, from my network. Oh, okay. Yep. Do you have a lot of turnover here? No. I, I mean, from company wise, you know, during the the time where, if you look back eight or ten years ago, we were in the financial crisis. Right. We lost That's a lot of loan about. officers. Mm -hmm. We had to kind of trim the fat for uh, for a company. You know, your salespeople really have no overhead because if they don't produce, there's really nothing that you got to pay per se. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for admin staff, if you're too heavy or too fat in admin, um, you know, that was, that was a bummer. That was really a bummer. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we step up as a company, you know, there are going to be some people that won't fit on the bus. Do you, do you force, does the company now with the recession and the, the downward turn of people, you know, getting these mortgages overturned and all this financial crisis, do you, does your company project maybe what might happen in the future or by looking at the way that society's moving? Is there any kind of way to analyze that? There is, you know, and we, you know, there's, there all, there's always gonna be different pillars of how you get business. You know, some pillar for us may be realtors, it might be past mm -hmm. clients, and you may wanna look at, I like to call it the flavor of the month. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes a special program will come out and maybe that special program helps first time home buyers or gives them grant money. So you, you work on that and you work on, on uh, trying to get that word out about home ownership and hey, there's grant money for you. As far as projections though, and you know, I try to take those things with a grain of salt mm -hmm. because you can Google, you can do this at the end of the year, it's kind of a fun thing, Google financial predictions that didn't come true. Mm -hmm. And you will see, <laughs> it's, I mean, and I think that's why consumers sometimes can get confused. Like mm -hmm. rates up, rates down, foreclosures up, foreclosures down. Yeah. Having a house is great, having a house is bad. Yeah. So, you know, I think for the average person, what a home means to them. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be something that you're going to be in and you're going to raise your family or you're just going to have your own little uh, little place that's yours, mm -hmm. it's a great thing. If you want to be a fix and flipper, then you want to make certain that you're you're doing some additional uh, some additional research and educating yourself. But for the average person, it's a great thing to have a to have a home. Now, when you say home, because some people are interested in an actual home, and some people are actually interested in a condo. Sure. Do you explain Same the thing. between them? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they both have their pros and cons. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of times it's lifestyle. Like sometimes somebody may like the idea of a condo because mm -hmm. with a condo, hey, you don't have to mow the lawn. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's but what I liked about my condo. Yeah. Had a pool, had the amenities, <laughs> See? and I didn't have to shovel you know, the driveway yep. or any, the parking spot. It was all taken care of. Yeah. Now I own a home, it's totally different. Yeah. My husband had to bring out the bust out the snowblower. <laughs> so it is different. You know? yeah. um, but you know, I think that ultimately having a home and having your own space and knowing that your company helps people get to that is truly amazing because every time mm -hmm. I step in my door I'm like I'm home and mm -hmm. it feels good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a great good. feeling.
It is. It's really nice, and I encourage people to, you know, if they can, you know, put money aside to start with a small place, a condo, and you know, then they can have their own dream home eventually. <laughs> Suzanne, you have like a really powerful story, and it's amazing listening to you talk about your work life. Do you have any tips that you would share with the audience about, you know, whether it's just a couple tips to either start off financially with getting on solid ground or personally? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think I think the biggest thing is to is to find your passion, find what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that irritates me, and I'll, pro I'll I answer questions all over the place, is going on Facebook and hearing somebody complain about the president, what's going on in mm -hmm. the country, and all this yeah. stuff. And ultimately, you have to really think like, okay, how does that affect you? Mm -hmm. And it may sound it may sound cold. Uh, I read an article years ago that said that until it's in my driveway will I pay attention to it. And that's really what I what I really try to do in my mm -hmm. life. I do have to sometimes pay attention to the financial markets and figure out why rates go up or down mm -hmm. uh, or if programs are changing. But ultimately, I think we live in one of the best times. You can YouTube something and, you know, hey, I'm struggling with depression. YouTube ways to get out of mm -hmm. depression. Mm -hmm. Find your passion. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just one little teeny step, because the longer that you that you live, the the farther away that you can get from that dream. But that doesn't mean that you can't take one little step. One little step, and I think that's what people get it all. You know, discombobulated because they just don't know how to just take a step forward. They see it as as too big. So usually, not usually, but. If, if you take a piece of paper, I'm, I'm old school, take a piece of paper and write down every single thing that you need mm -hmm. to do to get to that goal. Okay, what little thing can you do? Can you buy a book on it? Can you uh, watch a video on YouTube? Something. What can you do? Is there somebody that you can follow but on But sometimes on it's fear. It's fear. F yeah, fear, false expectations appearing real. That's mm -hmm. right. Fear is scary and just feel the fear, do it. What's the worst that can happen? You fall on your face. Get back up. Get back up. Yeah. Exactly. Get so the worst up. that can happen. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. That's awesome. awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Awesome talk with you. Um, don't forget to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Suzanne has been uh, phenomenal. <laughs> I appreciate your bonus. You're really nice. Yeah. And I think that too. gives a little insight to who you are, who, what this company represents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I hope that people find you in the future. Thank you. So thank, thank you guys. Thank you very much.